Welcome to my presentation, One Playbook to the Mall with Linux System Works. I'm Tim Maas, I work at Red Hat and, and I'm embedded in the Network Services team to work on networking support for the Linux System Works. Has any one of you already heard of Linux System Works? Okay, that's great, then you will learn a lot of new things. First of all, um, I wonder who of you is running. Um, Oh, it's not working. Okay, who of you is running a Linux system or maintaining Linux servers? Great, everyone. Do you have uh, do you have the need to run different releases in production? So not just Center six, but Center six and seven at the same time, things like this. Who of you has this problem? Only one. You're lucky, <laughs> I suppose. And if you uh, the other ones, did you ever experience any problems with upgrades when you? When, for example, CentOS 5 became end of life and you had to switch to CentOS 6, was this a problem for you? <laughs> so Linux System Works has this objective to make this easier for you by making the configuration, um, to abstract the configuration of the different releases in a way that you don't have to worry about the changes in upgrades on these um, different releases. So for example, um, you could already use nowadays Red Hat Ansible. Anyone knows Red Hat Ansible? Who has never heard of it? Okay, so then I can skip the introduction about this. So it's an. Um, yeah, okay. Is there a difference between Red Hat Ansible and Ansible? It's the same. Okay. Well, just not enough people know that's by Red Hat. Okay, so um, and of course you get it uh, with um, you can get um, support for Red Hat Ansible if you're purchasing the subscription for it. So basically, with Ansible, you can create playbooks and worlds to manage your configuration, and the Linux System Worlds project is using Ansible to provide you with very good worlds that abstract the configuration of these different systems. There's already some kind of abstraction in Ansible. For example, there's a package module which allows you to maintain, uh, to configure the package state um, regardless of the actual package manager. So you can say, install me this package, and I don't care whether you need to use YAM, ARP, DNF, whatever, you just use this. There's also the service module which makes possible to say, I want HTTPD started, and whether or not system D upstart or system five in it is running on the system, it will just work. But there's not yet a concept for higher um, level settings to abstract them in a way that you don't have to care about the underlying implementation. So for example, in the system walls, we have a wall for network configuration that allows you to specify what kind of network configuration you have, and it will work with um, CentOS or OS 6, where there's no network manager, but also with network manager on the newer systems. Then you can configure SE Linux, which currently does not have uh, any dependencies on different systems, but it might also be that you have that you would like to abstract some configuration there. Then there's time synchronization. There are um, changes, for example, between the provider for NTP, which was NTPD earlier, and then later it became Corny by default. Everything are things that you don't have to care about when you use system words because you only want, for example, network running, you want time synchronization working. You don't really care about what's happening, um, so that you have a solid base that you can use to build um, your custom solutions on top of it. Because, for example, you want to provide a web service um, for online banking, or you want to provide an online shop, but you don't want to provide, or you don't want to work on configuring the actual system on a network level, but on a higher level. And by using the system modes, you have an uh, simplified abstraction for configuring these base settings, and at the same time, you can also um, benefit from shared effort on maintaining all the settings that are not unique to your workload, so that you can focus on whatever is really special for your systems, and at the same time, you can also benefit from the best practices for the different platforms. For example, um, Corny is better maintained, uh, more secure, probably than NTP, and if you really have a uh, if you are afraid to migrate from NTP to Corny, or you don't have the time for this because you don't want to figure out the details of the configuration, you can just rely on system roles to ensure that you get time synchronization 
and automatically benefit from the underlying improvements for the different provider. At the same time, in the system walls project, we test the walls for compliance against the different systems. So this is an example from a pull request where we have a lot of test cases running against the different images. And only if they succeed, we merge in the pull request. And at the same time, we also ensure regularly that the walls continue to be working with the different platforms. <coughs> now let's take a look uh, about the technical details of such a wall. Since I maintain the network wall, I would start with an example um, for networking. Can anyone figure out what this does probably? So looks like it brings up the ETH0 network interface with DHCP. Yeah, so the correct answer was that it um, brings up ETH0 with DHCP, so which shows that it's really simple syntax that you can uh, easily understand. And um, what's common for all the walls is that they use variables for Ansible that start with the uh, subsystem name. So in this case, it's network connections. But there's uh, one slight difference. So it's, this is, uh, in this special case, it will actually bring up ETH0. But the connections, they abstract um, a connection profile versus the interface. So you don't manage the actual interface, but you can uh, for example, specify a profile, that's your management network, and by default, the profile name um, is used as the interface name as well, but you can also, for example, have different profiles for the same interface, which makes it easy to migrate from one network setting to another, because you can already um, install the profiles that you might need. For example, uh, when you first provision a system, and then later on you want to use it in a different way, then you would like the profiles for the life um, um, configuration already on the system, and then uh, you can, but at the same time, you would still would like to keep the current management network running. And therefore, um, we also have a configuration, uh, we differentiate between state and persistent state. Usually from Ansible, you only, there's, it's typical that you have one state variable, but we notice that this doesn't allow to express all the settings that, the people, uh, that an administrator might need. For example, if you would um, like to define that one configuration should be removed, um, it's uh, depending on your use case, you still want this configuration to be running, or you want the configuration to be disabled as well. And then you cannot express this if you only have one state, because then what, what's the um, meaning of absent? Therefore, we use, uh, here in this case, two state variables where you can differentiate between the uh, one-time state, and this time state, which supports up and down, and the persistent state, which impresses whether or not this configuration is actually, actually stored on this. And um, another thing that you can do with persistent state, in this case, uh, is you can, you can have a profile that just states persistent state absent. Any guesses what this could mean? That said, I, I was hoping it would be pretty obvious. So the idea here is that previously we, we were just managing one connection profile, but the question is what happens with the other connection profiles that are already on disk? Does it remove some? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the problem is uh, or the, you benefit most from configuration management if all your configuration is actually in the management system. But if you are also using manual methods maybe to debug something or to set up thing, uh, set up other things, it might happen that you have some kind of shadow configuration of your system that you don't know about. Because the best way to figure this out is to set up a system completely from scratch and then apply a configuration, see if it still works. But for network configuration, you, in this case, you can also say that everything that's not specified in this configuration should be removed. And, and so you can ensure that the actual runtime or the configuration on the system is really matched by what you have in the, you know, on your playbook. But of course, this also, um, this is always um, something up for consideration because people might also expect that it's always possible to just uh, specify parts of the configuration or they would expect that it's always the full configuration. So this is kind of the uh, hack that we're using here. The other walls have similar support as well. 
In general, the network wall it also supports other interfaces, such as bonding and uh, teaming, for example, for link aggregation, bridges, um, make VLAN and InfiniBand settings. And in case there's any co uh, network configuration that you are using and you're missing with the system also, please talk to me. I would be really interested to know, to know about this. Here's the, another example to show how the SE Linux configuration is happening. So this um, world configuration allows um, to specify that SSH is, uh, is running on a different port. And in this case, with SE Linux, you again have the problem um, about how to specify that you uh, have the complete configuration of your system. Because, for example, if you have two playbooks and one is configuring SSH, the other one is the web server, you might have, um, you do not have all the SE Linux settings in each playbook, but and at the same time, you maybe want to um, enforce that there are no unknown settings on the server. So at least there's, we can give you that we, um, an option which uh, allows to configure as Linux to purge all other settings in the system. And um, in general, since these configurations, they, they are this, it, um, you can use some Ansible templating magic, more or less, to um, create a full list of all the settings that you would like and then apply the wall later on uh, to merge all the settings. Of course, the, you then have to make so, sure that you don't use individual playbooks that do not know about all the configuration. Despite configuring as Linux parts, this way, you, at the same time, you can also set up various Booleans, file contexts for different paths, and do base as Linux settings by configuring the, um, the policy that you would like to run. Or even, if it's not a good idea, you could even disable as Linux this way. Another wall that um, shows how to um, get, um, where I can show you how to abstract uh, the abstraction levels. In this case, for example, time synchronization, we can just specify a certain hard-coded time zone that you would like to use. This is probably all the NTP configuration that most people might care about because they want to use their company NTP server. Anything else is probably, uh, they can rely on the best practices of the platform. And with this configuration, um, in case you actually need to um, use a special provider, you could use NTP, but the role by itself, it would autom automatically choose either NTP or Crony, depending on the actual system, to make sure that you don't have to carry, uh, to worry about this one. Despite NTP configuration, the time synchronization role also supports the pre precision time protocol, where you can uh, get um, a lot better um, synchronized time using a different technique. Another one that's uh, currently in development, but it's probably also very interesting for you, is the storage wall. And here you can, uh, for example, define uh, LVM or disk volumes and mount them. Um, and this is an example to create um, a volume group space on dev SDA with a volume backup that's mounted at a certain path. You can also specify, for example, mount options, different file systems. And uh, the default, for example, for the size of file systems, again, depends on the platform default. So, for example, where I switched uh, to XFS for the default file system in your releases. Now, uh, let's give you a um, look how it looks like in a short demonstration about the system walls. Can, can you read this from me? Okay, great. So, this is my... Um, test system where I have, oh, what's this? Why is the keyboard not working? Here we are. Um, so I have a test playbook. And this basically contains uh, settings that I mentioned before. I will run this on the rail 6 machine, on the center 7 machine, on the rail 8 beta machine. Um, I just define um, the management interface. Um, I get the configuration from a variable and uh, also want interface with two um, slave or memory devices. And I set up an NTP server and the storage pool. And so this was all the configuration that we saw earlier, and then in the end you also have to specify an answer that you want to use the wall, especially. There are different possibilities. 
I chose here to uh, use the task method to just say these are the three words that I would like to run. And now I can run Ansible playbook and apply this playbook to other systems and we um, see that they are here with the network or it did a few checks, then it decided uh, which um, backend to use. So for example, for well 6, it used uh, init scripts, also for the set of 7, because the image that I was using didn't use network manager. Uh, now we are at the time sync protocol. So you see uh, time sync wall. You see also a lot of configuration or the work that basically the wall uh, is doing for you, so you don't have to worry about all these cases. And in the end, um, also the storage wall is running to configure all the um, storage configuration. You see everything works successfully. I can, for example, log in to the Center 7 system. And I see there's the web one interface. Um, and I can also look at the mount points and I see um, the volume group is now mounted at uh, interface and when I, for example, use the well 8 machine, I can use uh, NMCLI to see the actual connections because it's running network manager instead of in script. And the um, mount configuration is basically the same. Okay, so let's continue uh, with the presentation. Question? Oh, yeah, sure. How does it choose which uh, implementation to use in uh, Network Manager or, or Network Scripts? Yeah, so the question was, uh, how does, do the roles decide which implementation to use? This is actually a hard problem to solve because uh, initially we just um, said, like, when you want to use uh, Rails 6 or CentOS 6, uh, use Init Scripts, and then later on Network Manager would be the default because that's the platform default as well. But then we figured out if people intentionally disable Network Manager and want to use Network Scripts, then we might break the system. So maybe not a good idea. So then we decided that we uh, just check if Network Manager is running, we will use Network Manager, otherwise we use init scripts. And at the same time, <coughs> there's also, um, we introduced a variable that contains the platform default implementation. So if you don't care about your, the certain implementation, but, but it could just be by accident that you don't use the recommended defaults, then you can say, please default to the default implementation on this actual system. So now uh, I hope you're all excited about the system awards and would like to get them. It's very easy to install them on CentOS uh, and Well because they're their package at Well system awards. They're also going to be available in Fedora soon, uh, but then as Linux system awards the upstream name, and under this name you can also install them using Ansible Galaxy, or of course run them directly from GitHub. In the future, we're planning to enhance the walls and also add more walls. So for example, the storage wall is not yet final, it's still work in progress, so if you have any feedback about what you would like to configure regarding storage, please reach out to us. Then there's also going to be um, logging configuration, which is, which is also already work in progress. So for example, to configure remote logging, local logging, and against various backends. There's firewall configuration, which for which we also already have a role, but it's, we are still discussing whether or not this is the right interface to provide, because there's not so much abstraction yet. Metrics um, is on the roadmap, and also configuration, for example, as a base for SAP HANA, which uh, it's also a little bit complicated. And we already um, talked a little bit of challenges. So, um, yeah, besides the problem about which, um, which provider to use or which backend to use, there's in general the problem about respecting uh, user choices versus applying best practices. And there cannot be too many choices because then it becomes too complicated again. So, for example, um, also some uh, words they just require, or they will just set the full configuration, such as the um, time configuration, so it doesn't keep uh, or respect any user changes that are in your configuration, but creates the configuration from scratch. 
And also, for example, with the network configuration, it's possible to configure only partial network profiles, but it's not possible to just do a single change to one existing profile, for example, adding an IP address, because it's also, um, you, it becomes a lot more complicated to distinguish between does the user, user just want to change one small thing, or is this, does this actually mean all other IP addresses should be removed and only one IP address is specified? Um, and this also um, creates a little bit of challenges to make the walls item potent because actually whenever you run Ansible um, playbooks, you want it reports back whether or not some things change, but you don't want to be want to report any changes uh, in case nothing changed effectively. But if you, for example, also need to pull, uh, remove um, as Linux settings or want to remove any user settings, then you also need to keep track of these different from the ones that the user already specified, uh, and then you need to get a uh, better understanding about them. So as I already said, we would welcome your feedback, so you can reach out to me by email, or there's also the Linux System World upstream project on GitHub, where we recommend your contribution, uh, for example, as issues and feature requests, um, the Linux system worlds and Rails system worlds exist as components in Vaxilla, depending on whether or not you are using Fedora or Red. Um, I will be also tomorrow at Fostan, or also here, if you would to like to talk. And I was wondering who of you is now going to install the system worlds and try them out. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. And yeah, I'm really interested uh, in your feedback if you tested them what's working, what isn't working, what are you missing, and what are your other questions? Maybe you've thought. Um, for me, it's interesting to implement my own role. Is there any good documentation on how to do that, or should I just look at what you guys came up with? So, in general, uh, what is something that you uh, can do regardless of what we are doing. So, uh, for example, you can have a role that's just you can use to set up uh, a certain service on your system. For example, like maybe Nextcloud or something like this. But, but the special case about the system is not the technology of using a role, but more like the concept behind this to have this abstraction. Uh, in this case, so well, what is it? What you would like to implement? <coughs> well, there's an uh, open source project I'm working on, and it's needs to support different versions of different distributions. So basically, maybe next time I want to install Nextcloud on it, so now I have to look at where do I use the package offered by the operating system, where do I use third-party packages, maybe do I build my own package on, on distribution, and being able to abstract this thing away would make the general configuration easier, I guess. Yeah, I think, so yeah, so for this, there are so the question was uh, that uh, you want to uh, implement a world that allows to install a certain open source project and it should work in different uh, operating systems. And so the, I guess there's a lot of documentation about writing worlds in general and if you are especially interested in this concept that we are using, I recommend looking at our source code and take a look because it contains a lot of uh, if and else is, uh, to figure out what to do in which case. Okay, Alexandra? Uh, I have a question. Do you see any integration with this project uh, in Copic project? Because it feels like it's a management for a new server kind of thing, but is there a possibility to integrate? So the question was uh, whether there's uh, any possibility to integrate this with Corporate or collaborate on this. And we're also um, thinking about this. So one idea was, for example, because Corporate does not only provide um, setting the configuration, but also reporting the configuration, that maybe the uh, maybe Corporate could generate these generic playbooks uh, in the syntax of a system world. So you can then take um, one system as a template create the system model from this, and then use Ansible again to apply your changes. So this would be a possibility, for example. Mm -hmm. Another question, do you know if, I don't know much about Ansible, I'm sort of discovering Ansible, but do they have the concept 
of what you're doing in a more general way, or do they intend to do that at some point? So what you're doing is sort of abstracting a playbook that you can then apply to different, in this case, operating systems, CentOS and Fedora, but the general principle is wider than that, that you want to have something that is more general and then is mapped to a specific target platform. You could do this not just for operating systems, but you could do it for hardware switches, or you could do um, the same for um, not networking configuration, but packages, and you could target non-yum packaged systems as well. But just, is this something that the um, community of Ansible has some ideas about, sort of how to, do you know so, anything about that? Yeah, it's a really great question. Uh, so the question was um, whether or not there are already other efforts in Ansible to abstract different kind of systems that you would like to manage with Ansible. And uh, one example that you already gave was, is there something for network configuration or network um, devices? And yes, there is, this is especially um, one thing where Ansible is a very big, um, or has a very big a range of uh, tools to offer, but not at, uh, it's not, currently it's not at the wall level, but at the module level. But they are also um, figuring out to switch from modules uh, to walls, because with modules you basically have to, uh, usually you apply every change by itself, so you don't have the concept of doing things together, but you say, I want to add this IP address to this interface, and then I want to do link integration, or basically you would do it the other way around, but <coughs> generally it's decoupled. And uh, you can already find um, network modules for, I don't know how many, like probably all major um, network device providers, Cisco, Juniper, and I guess 20 other names, so it exists there. And as for packaging, this is, uh, was an example um, that's also already there. So there's like a generic package module. You can just say uh, this package should be installed, and then it will use whatever backend is required for the specific system, okay. which works in general quite good. But then with packages, you also have the problem that there are different naming conventions. So for example, uh, if you're not looking between CentOS and Debian, then uh, on CentOS or Fedora or the uh, pa um, development packages, they have a suffix dash devil, and in Debian it's usually dash dev. And they also, um, for libraries, they add the uh, version of the library to the name, so you can have different major releases of a library. So there are also some challenges in this case. But this is also something which we are handling at the wall level. For example, if you want to use network scripts or init scripts and set up bridges, then the network scripts it just runs, um, it just basically a bunch of shell scripts that run commands. And uh, before recent Fedora releases, you would use the bridge utils to set up bridges with network scripts, but then they switch to, um, I think it's part of IPv2, we have a different command set that you use to set up bridges. So, uh, for example, for this, this is something that the world also needs to abstract, that it know, needs to know which kind of dependencies to install in case of bridges need to be managed. <coughs> okay, thank you everyone.